Hey YouTube, it's Roman. Today I want to talk about Monte Carlo integration. We're going to start with a visual interpretation of what Monte Carlo integration is all about, and then we're going to move over to Python and actually code our own simulation to approximate a definite integral. I don't want to spend too much time on the math, I just want to start building some intuition visually. So let's go ahead and draw a chart really quickly. We're going to have x and f of x. And we can consider some function that perhaps looks like this. And we have two points, let's say A and B. And we want to figure out the area underneath this curve between these two points. Now, usually, analytically, we could solve this as the integral from A to B of f of x dx. And that would give us this area here underneath the curve. In some cases, this integral here won't actually have an analytical solution. So we have to use numerical methods like Monte Carlo integration to find the value that we're looking for. So let's establish the method of Monte Carlo integration. What we can do to find the area underneath this curve if we can't solve for it analytically is start by randomly sampling points in the domain. So we can say xi is equal to x1, x2, all the way to xn, where xi is distributed uniformly from a to b. So what is that going to look like? If we randomly sample one point, well, maybe it'll fall right here between a and b. Maybe another one will get this guy, maybe another one this guy. And then as we keep randomly sampling points, each one has the same probability of being selected from this uniform distribution. And we're going to end up with a collection of points nicely distributed across the x axis. Given that we know the function f of x, we can find its value for each of these randomly sampled points. So what we end up with is a collection of f of x's. f of x i is equal to f of x1, f of x2, all the way to f of x n where n is the total number of points we sample from a to b, and we end up with this collection of function values corresponding to each point in the domain. So this point here is going to correspond to this functional value, this point to this one, and so on and so forth. We have all of the corresponding functional values at each of the points we've randomly sampled. If we think about this in terms of our definite integral definition, this is actually quite similar. We're taking the function evaluated at a certain point, and then we're also going to consider another point and a, a function evaluated at that point. The only difference is we're not developing this notion of a delta x. We are inducing that change randomly through this distribution of randomly selected x's uh, via that uniform distribution from a to b. Thinking in terms of our definite integral, if we look at this chart, we know what height is for each of these rectangles. We know it's just going to be these green lines corresponding to the function's value at each of the points randomly sampled on the x-axis. So what does that make our width? Well, we have a constant width of b minus a. That's this length here. We're trying to find the area underneath the curve between these two points. But the width of this one rectangle, if you will, doesn't change. Since we have this fixed width, we can find a rectangle for each of the corresponding function values. So what we end up with is this fixed width of a rectangle here and a height that changes based on the function's value. So we're ending up with a series of rectangles as you can see here, for each of the points that we've evaluated from our random sample that was uniformly distributed from A to B. What is the area of each of these rectangles? Well, the area of each of these rectangles is simply going to be defined by the height times the width. So the height is quite clearly f of x, and the width doesn't change. It's always going to be b minus a. That's this length here. So mathematically, we can say that the area 
of each of these rectangles abstractly is going to be b minus a times f of x. Now, what we can do is we can sum the area of each of these rectangles across all of our samples by doing a summation from i equals the first sample to the nth sample. And then we take the fixed area across the x-axis, our width, and multiply it by our height, f of xi. Now we're going to divide by the total number of samples that we generated from the uniform distribution. And we can do that by multiplying by 1 over m. And what's really cool about this value is it is essentially the average area of each of the rectangles that we visualized above in the graph. What's really cool about the average value of each of the rectangles that we generated above is it is approximately equal to the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. Let's head on over to Python and see this in action. All right, back in Python, here I have a definite integral from 0 to 2 of 4x cubed dx. Now, there is an analytical solution available to us, and that is 16. We're going to use that as our baseline for our Monte Carlo integration to see how we're doing. Uh, I generated the function using matplotlib below and numpy. So I generate 100 points from 0 to 2, uh, and then I am simply cubing each of those points and then multiplying them by 4, and I end up with this chart. The upshot of Monte Carlo integration and Monte Carlo simulation in general is that it is actually really easy to implement via code. So what do we need? Well, first we need to develop this notion of a function. So def f of x is going to return four times x cubed, which is our function that we're trying to integrate. Then we're going to randomly sample points in the domain, zero to two. And we can very easily do that by defining capital X as being equal to MP dot random dot uniform zero to two. And let's do 10,000 points. Now we're going to come up with those green strips. We're going to evaluate each of these points in the domain according to the function that we have defined here. So we'll say capital Y is equal to F of capital X. And that is going to evaluate each of the points in our sample at the function 4x cubed. And now all we need to do to develop the areas of these rectangles that we have for each of the samples is multiply it by that b minus a. In this case, b is 2, a is 0, thus b minus a is simply 2. So we can just multiply this entire series by 2. Now, in traditional Monte Carlo fashion, we can simply sum over all of our samples. So sum y, and then divide by the total number of samples, in this case 10,000, and we will get our answer of 15.985, which is not a bad approximation for our analytical solution, which is 16. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would like to subscribe, like the video, it helps me out a lot. It helps me keep creating cool content like this. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. You can always shoot me an email too if you have a more specific question. Um, always feel free to come at me with video ideas. Um, I really appreciate all the video ideas that you guys have been giving me. I'm, I'm doing my best to try to get to all of them. Um, other than that, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.